You're watching The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the God. We are The Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. Yes, sir. Denzel Curry. Welcome, sir. What's going on? What's How's going on, Envy? What's I'm happening, chilling. my brother? Not much. Just chilling. You're from Florida, right? Yep. Now, you know all the craziest people in America come from the Bronx and all of Florida. Yes. That is a fact. He's like, that I'm is aware. a fact. You don't live there no more, though, still, do you? Nah. Because of the crazy? Half and half, but I just wanted a different change in scenery and stuff like that, you know? What part of Florida? I'm from Miami, Florida. Oh, that's <laughs> the, one of the best parts. Carol City. Oh, no, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Where you live now, LA? Yeah, I stay in LA now. Okay. So why why'd you move? Because I wanted to get more work done. Like I worked on like several projects when I was living in South Florida anyway. Like that's my home and all, but at the same time you can't you tend to outgrow your city and you I just wanted to see something different, you know? At what point did you move? I moved actually um, 2017, like early 2017. Got you. Yeah. You had a lot going on in such a young life. Um, you used to be roommates with XXX Tentacion? Yeah, because he came to live with me um, when I was uh, working on Imperial. That's when I was working on that project. But me and him met roughly in 2015, mm -hmm. like the end of 2015. Well, actually, <clears throat> excuse me, I burped a little bit. But anyway, yeah, we met at a house party completely on accident, like me and him, because um, I was drunk, and then Ski <laughs> came, and he came, and they brought a whole bunch of people. And then, like, I guess my homie Abyss told them that they were supposed to be performing at my house. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, I'm drunk. So I'm like, bro, who the hell told you that? So I thought it was this one dude. I was like, did you tell him, you know what I'm saying? You told him they was performing at my house. So X didn't know what was going on. He was just ready to go off just in case something happened. But I was like, you know, I was chill about it. I was like, nah, y'all can stay. Y'all can chill out, you know, and hang out. And then eventually I started hearing about them. Cause I heard a song, it was called F, but they spell it F U X K, and that was the song I heard. And then um, I love it when they run, and we met back up at the uh, at a Kodak show on January first, two thousand sixteen. How does murder affect you? <sighs> Shit was crazy. I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna even hold you. I was like in Florida. He was one of the people that convinced me to come back to Florida, just to like you know. Cause I was getting homesick, but me and him would talk for like three hours, and he was like telling me like I should have never left and stuff like that. We could have been plotting on so much stuff, and I'm just like, dog, me leaving Florida was the smartest thing I ever did. Mm -hmm. Like most people should leave their own city eventually because it gets to a point where, you know, that's love. Love is always gonna be where home is, but it's also where hate is as well. And I was trying to tell him like, yo, let's you know come to Cali. You know what I mean, like. All of us is like chilling out there. I know you got different beefs and all that stuff, but dog, you straight when you know just hanging around with the homies that you've been hanging around with. So that really made you not want to go back because you were in Florida. Because that you... was one of the main reasons why I didn't want to stay in Florida because mm -hmm. I felt like the hate was coming. Yeah, it was coming. Mm -hmm. It was coming. Once you get to a certain pla certain part in your career, the hate is gonna come. Period, and that goes for everybody. It doesn't just go for Florida. It just goes for everyone. You know what I mean? But it always seems like your, your your hometown is always where the biggest hate comes from. Everybody outside of that doesn't really see you, so they show you love, but your hometown always sees you, so it's always like, that's that little nigga right there. Yeah, hey, that's the nigga I went to school with. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly, because they don't have nothing going on for themselves because they didn't focus enough on what they had to do. I was focused since high school. Like, I've been doing this since I was like 16 years old. But what got you into rapping? Well, hold got, on, where, where were you when you got the news about X, though? I was in Miami when it happened. Ugh. Right when it happened. Because I went there to see my family. I went there to see X, Ronnie, everybody. I went there to see my peoples. And then, you know, right when I was about to go back, it happened. And I had to stay there for another week. Damn. And you probably didn't want to stay there. You like I didn't want to stay there for another week. Like, I was there for the first week. I was like, all right, cool. I see my peoples. I got it out of my system. I'm going to go back home. And then, boom, I get a call. At first, I didn't pick up the call. It was my homie Kane. I get the call. And then I was like, you know, I'm going to call him back. Then I, I text him, I was like, yo, what's up? And then he was like, fool, X got bagged? And I'm like, what you mean he got bagged? Like, what are you talking about? Did he go to jail? Like, he's like, no, fool, did he get bagged? Like, did somebody kill him? I was like, what are you talking about? So he sent me a um, he sent me the thing on Twitter where they were showing his body in the uh, car. The dude was walking by and I'm like, bed. for real, bro? And I'm like, no, 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 this can't be real. So Ronnie J called me. 
Ronnie J like, bro, you seen what happened? I'm like, yeah. Like, I don't know if he's still still alive. I don't know. I didn't know his status. Right. Mm-hmm. So he was like, what should, he was like, what should we do? So I'm like, all right, I'm gonna come to your house. We're gonna start from there. Cause he had the car. I was like, I'm gonna come to your, I'm gonna Uber to your crib. Then we're gonna Uber to the um hospital. We just gonna figure it out. So on the way there, we thinking like, okay, he's gonna be straight. You know what I'm saying? Let's just go to the hospital. Let's see what's going on. And then right. We get caught in traffic because it's five o'clock. That's when traffic gets crazy. Mm-hmm. That's when um, I get the my brother text me. He was like, "Bro, he gone," and that was it. And that shit made me break down and cry. It was Has just, it hit you like really hit it, you like? It hit me because this is somebody I made music with. Somebody I always I would talk to. Somebody that I hung out with. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, and that was like what really hurt me the most because I helped him like come up. That was like really what like struck me. Do you move any differently now because of that? Do I move any differently, bro? If it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen. You know what I'm saying? I just, you know, I'm protected by God. You know what I mean? I'm protected by God too, but you got to stay out the way of some of these crazy motherfuckers. It's, it's easy to say if it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen, but it's certain ways you can prevent it sometimes. Yeah, I, I mean, just I know guess... when to leave, and I just know what places not to be. Exactly. At. Right, but he was really just going to buy a motorcycle or whatever it was that he was doing. It wasn't yeah. like he was at a club or any place that he can't be, you know? So that's what makes it different, but, like you said. But certain things just happen randomly, though. Right, that's what I'm saying. It's random. Yeah, what I'm about the power like, of the tongue, though? Because it's, you know, like he, he did speak, a lot, he it, did speak and, a lot of death a lot, like somebody's going to kill me, yada, yada, yada. I mean, I have this conversation with majority of my friends every day, and we always say the same thing. Like, he kind of did speak, speak it onto himself. But did he deserve to go out like that? I don't think so. Nah, nah. You know what Definitely I mean? Not. Especially when I look at everybody bashing them and stuff like that. And I understand the situation and everybody, what they had feelings towards him when he was alive. But, you know what I mean? But I don't think nobody deserves to die, period. Well, talk about him a little bit because people said that that he was changing as a person and people around him and, See, and his family there was, seen that. there was different eras of X. Mm-hmm. There is like black hair era, like when he just had regular hair when I met him. You know, he was just coming up, just doing his thing, just coming up, just making music. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Then you had the blonde and black era when he had the half blonde, half black hair. And that's when, you know, when all the crazy stuff started happening with the allegations, with, you know what I'm saying, the trial, the shows, the riots, the Rob Stowe situation, just everything. Then it went to the transition where he was white haired ex, where he first got the tree in the middle of his forehead and he shaved his eyebrows. Mm-hmm. That was like his evolving state. And then it went to Indigo X. He described it as Indigo X when we talked. The last time we talked, he said the reason why he changed his hair and and tried to, you know, do things differently is because, like, he just felt like he understood how it was being a bad person and how easy it was. And he was just like, I want to change. You know what I mean? That was the main thing he told me Mm -hmm. at the end of, like, the journey. Mm -hmm. And, like, that's why he, like, wanted to make those changes. Like, And I just felt like people didn't give him enough time to actually try to redeem himself and they would do the same thing with Chris Brown when he had the same thing happening to him I just felt like people always hold that against Chris Brown correct Mm -hmm. and they was holding the same thing to X but they never gave him the chance to like really redeem themselves because you never know like they could people could make 360s man you know absolutely what do you what do you think about rappers you you mentioned it a little bit rappers that uh, that talk down on him like I guess Vic mentioned recently Set up. I haven't heard the freestyle, so I don't want to. Say I didn't what he hear said. a freestyle, yeah, yeah. but after seeing everybody's reaction, and then I'm thinking, I remember, um, I was on Sway in the morning, and we was talking about Vic Mensa as well, and I'm just, it was like, how you feel about that situation with him and Six Nine? And I'm like, yo, Vic, focus on yourself. Don't focus on everybody else. Mm-hmm. Let them do what they're doing. If you got a message, if you got what you saying, focus on that. Focus on you. Focus on building you. But don't go out and try somebody else. If it's working for them, it's working for them. Period. I may not have to like it, but it's working for them. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But don't talk nothing about the dead, bro. Like, especially that's a friend of mine. Right. And, and I know you. That's the different part. That's like, come on, bro. Come on. That's, you no. You would reach out to Vic when you hear it. Like, yo, that was foul. I, I said it straight up. Like, bro, that was whack. It's right. whack as fuck. Period. Were you at the BET Hip Hop Awards? I was not there. Okay. I'm on tour right now, so. You couldn't make it. Nah. It's not something you really wanted to be at. Not really. (laughs) (laughs) Not saying it like that. It's just like, I don't like being around like, you you know, rappers. Huh? You don't like rappers. Dude, I admire artists. I just, you know, I just think rappers are weird. Period. Me too. 
I just think they're all weird. <laughs> they're all like kind of fake and phony. Like I ain't with that shit. Now people would look at this cover and say you're one of the weird rappers. I w no, that's a difference. I'm not a weird rapper. I'm a weird artist. <laughs> that's the difference. <laughs> What's the difference between artists and rappers? <laughs> rappers just rap. I'm an artist. I can do it all. I can see what you're saying. Like, like, cause somebody like Andre 3000 is more of an artist. Yes, that's yeah, an yeah, artist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, Outkast's an artist. Kendrick is an artist. Artist. And yeah, you yeah, dabble yeah, yeah. with other genres too. You like Black Sabbath and you like hip hop. Yeah, well, more than Black Sabbath, I like all types of things. You know, mm -hmm. I like um Goldie, like drum and bass. I like um, what else? I started getting into trip hop, like Tricky and DJ Shadow and stuff like that. Um, what else? I like Gorillas. I like Danger Mouse. I like Nirvana. I like Nirvana. You know, one song I found extremely interesting to you because I loved the message behind it was Clout Cobain. Yeah. Tell the people what that means. Well, honestly, that's only for your interpretation. It's for all you guys' interpretation of what y'all think the song is and what y'all think the video's about. But honestly, to me, I just thought it was a circus and it just came from a joke that me and the homies shared together. And the joke was talking about festivals being like a clout circus. Mm. So Why what, the Cobain what, part though? Because the Cobain he, because everybody looks up to Cobain, and they look up to the fact that he actually uh, how he died like it's a glorified exactly way to go. You know, like people just want to feel themselves. But now you got an era where everybody want to be sad and everybody want to be emo and everybody want to be emotional. Yeah. And it's good to have emotions. I'm not saying it's not bad to have emotions, but when you have your emotions and then like throw out a negative think about it like yeah I want to kill myself every day like I want to take pills and numb the pain and stuff like that and I'm not bashing nobody that does that because everybody has a different way of dealing with pain Correct. and dealing with real life situations I just see it differently you know what I mean it shouldn't be celebrated yeah it shouldn't be celebrated yeah. it seems like that's the thing to do and like then, when people feel sad it's like that's the thing because everybody else is doing it. yeah and I see why people like you know what I'm saying? Why people bash Russ because they be going at people like that. But it's two sides to the coin. It's just like, yeah, I'm sober, but I'm not a stranger to smoking weed, taking acid, taking shrooms and shit. Like, I'm not a stranger to that. You know what I mean? And I'm not going to bash somebody who does that. And I'm not going to bash somebody who takes Zans and stuff like that. I would just want them to, you know, to wise up before it's too late. And not make it seem cool for everybody. But that's what I exactly. feel like Russ is doing. Like, Russ isn't bashing it. He's just saying, yo, that's not cool. People are dying from it. Like, it's not cool to be addicted. And I see people giving him backlash just because he's kind of like the, the the parent, like saying, don't you do that. That's yeah, wrong. but people don't want to hear you preaching about it. You know what I mean? Mm. It's, the, it's the way you say it. It's not even how, he, like he, me and him are saying the exact same thing. It's mm -hmm. the how you say it. Mm -hmm. People ain't going, if you be like, oh, I can't do da, 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 like Not preaching. Yeah, right. people going to be like, bro, shut up. <laughs> but if you be like, look, bro. It's like this, it's like this, and I don't want this to happen. They'll be like, they'll think about it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Even if it don't hit them right there, it's going to hit them. I don't think these kids are thinking about the consequences of their actions, man. Like, I don't think they think about death until they see it happen to somebody and they don't feel like it and could happen to them. And I think for a them. period of time, everybody's like, okay, we're not doing this anymore. I'm going to change. Yeah, and but it's not right real. And then they right back at it. Sure. I mean, I'm pretty sure most of these kids do think about death every day. Yeah, but I don't think they think of the finality of Not that. the consequences. You, you know mean. what I'm saying? Like, I mean, because they're living in the moment. Yeah. If you right. want to put it in terms like that. They're yeah. just living in the moment. Like, they hear it. They listen to it. You know, it's similar. They want to catch a vibe to it. They want to see what that feels like. So, basically, they're all, like, just subjects of experience. Like, even on social media now, I see people saying things like, XX, XXX is not really dead. I'm like, bro, stop it. Like, stop it. You're still I mean, not dealing with reality. Technically, he's not dead. Spirit, his energy's alive. Yeah, 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 energy never leaves. Yeah. Energy will never leave. So, technically, he's not dead. Nobody's really dead. Nobody really dies, you know? It's just because energy is just going to keep recycling itself. But physically. Physically, he, yeah. yeah. Physically, he's not here. Yes. Spiritually, he's here. And mentally, he's in everybody's heads. All right, can we talk about the song Taboo and what experience made you write that song? Because, you know, you got the Me Too movement, then you got, like, stuff where I wanted to write something where people does not touch on subjects of molestation because it happens to everyone. Mm -hmm. It happens to females. It happens to males. It happens to prisoners. It happens to damn near everyone. Like, even if it's not physical, like, you could say you got taken advantage of emotionally. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to put that in a song, but I wanted to make it seem like it was a physical thing. You know what I mean? 
So I wanted to touch on that subject because I don't feel like, I just feel like nobody ever has, in this generation at least, nobody has talked about it. You ever been molested? I got molested when I was eight. You got molested when you was eight? Yep. You know, I'm going to be real. I did get molested when I was young. All right. A family oh, member? Yeah. Hmm? Was it a family member? It was like, I don't even like talking about it, honestly. Mm. But I did get molested when I was mad young. Mm-hmm. I don't like talking about it because it's just like, it's not me. It's, I don't want that to define me as my person. You know what I mean? It won't. I mean, for me, I didn't even think it was something wrong until I got older. I actually saw Tyler Perry on Oprah. And he was on there talking about it and, cr- and crying about it. And I was like, well, what the hell's wrong with him? And then I had to think, well, what's wrong with me that I enjoyed it, but, you know, he didn't. So that's just something that you'll unpack as you probably get older. I just don't like talking about that shit. And see, people always talk about, well, why didn't somebody come forward when it happened? Why would somebody wait until 20 years later to bring it up? But when it's time for you to feel like you want to express yourself, that's when it's time. And if you're not ready to express that... Then... I think it's different for young men, though, especially when it's a woman. It's different because, like... You feel emasculated. Mm -hmm. Like, that's why most men don't come out and say, like, that happened to them. Like, women is easier, but with men, it's not. It's it's not a thing because you don't want to be seen like a bitch. Who touched on you, a man or a woman? It was a man. Oh, see, see, mine was a woman. So I get it. Did you you still see that family member when you got older? Yeah, it was a family member. No, I said, nah. I just, it's the crazy part that I know the person. Right now. Right now. I don't talk to him. I don't come. Nothing. Did you ever tell anybody, like in your family? My mom knows, and my brothers know. Did they believe you when you told them all? Cause yeah, they believe me. They believe you. Yeah. You gotta put him on blast. Cause I mean, you never know. I mean, he probably still doing that now. You know what I'm saying? The other young man. It's way more complicated than that. Not for you. Not for you. And don't get me wrong, it's not my dad or none, no crazy shit yeah, like that. You, you know what I'm saying? Man. You gotta, that's, it's not just, even, that's not even a conversation for us. That's right. a therapy conversation. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. As in, you know, it's not my like. It's really not, like, something I like talking about, bro, because it's just, like, you know, I don't like feeling like that. Absolutely. I just don't like thinking about it. I hate it. That's what makes me want to be a better person every day. Mm-hmm. All right. Now, All right, now, let's get off this highway. Let's talk about your influences growing there. up. You're from Miami. Yeah. How big of that Miami music scene influenced you? I mean, when it comes down to it, you know, it influenced me as in, like, damn, I could come out the city. But at the same time, I could never rap like them. I can't rap like Ross. I can't rap like Trick. And I can't rap like Trina, you know? Because I simply wasn't that person. I wasn't doing stuff like that at the time. Now I could probably do it because it's just like I've been around the rodeo a hell of times to, like, talk about shit like that. But I choose not to. Mm -hmm. And it's just, you know, I would just say it influenced me, like, yeah, to come out of my own city. But I wanted to do it something different than... What everybody else has yeah, seen like, it before. Y'all, it's like this wave, this generation got a different wave. Like you, X, even Kodak. You know what I mean? Kodak is a little bit more similar to the Trick Daddies and stuff like that. Yeah. But why, why do you think y'all had like that underground type of vibe? It all started with Blackland Radio 66.6. That's how it all started. It's a pirate radio station? What's that? Yeah, tell us what that is. Blackland Radio 66.6 was a tape created by the infamous Space Ghost Perp. And if mm. y'all know who Space Ghost Perp is, I don't know if mm. y'all mm. are hip to that. Familiar. So Space Ghost Perp came out with this tape called Blackland Radio 66.6, which created like this whole wave within the underground because after that, he went to New York and him and Rocky linked up. And, you know, it was Raider Clan, ASAP Mob. And then Perp came back to Miami and that's when we met. But we talked over the phone about the whole Raider Clan thing and I was like one of the first people to join. And... It just ended up building from just Miami, and then it went throughout the whole South. Mm-hmm. And even when they disbanded, it even, like, broke out more and more. Like, you got people like him, Young Lean, and, like, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Like, Bones, Puya, just mad people. It was just a lot of people. Now you got groups like Sesh Hollow Water Boys, which spawned from three Raider Clan members and one Raider Clan affiliate. Then you have myself, which I came out from under it. Then you had people like Young Simi. You had people like um, Kinayata. Oh, man. It's like a lot of things. But Blackland Radio is what started it. Like the whole changing your A's to V's and, mm-hmm. you know, your um, 
E's and O's to X's, all that stuff. Why? That's how all that's happened. It was hieroglyphics. Oh. It was hieroglyphics, and that's how we used to write. That's what really like influenced the back of the album, because gotcha. I even started doing it again because that's one of, part of my roots. And what got you into rapping? Like, what was that first thing that got you into spitting? Poetry. Mm. You was a spoken word guy. Not spoken word. I'm like the chirp birds and the bees and trees. And, <laughs> nah, I ain't with all that. But I I respect it. Mm-hmm. I listen to it. I like Big Rube and stuff like that. But I was just into Ooh, Big Rube. Yeah, classic. But I was just into um. I was just really into like just writing. I'll just if it was art, I was just into it because right. I was into drawing first, mm-hmm. and I you know went to art school and everything, and um, but rapping that was just like a hobby. I just like doing it for fun, like making poetry. That's it was all for fun. Mm-hmm. I like listening to music, and I was like, man, I wish I could talk about stuff like that and do that stuff and how they was rapping like that and this and that. And then a friend of mine named Premi, he taught me how to um rap in the Boys and Gr- Girls Club. That's what happened. Why'd you separate the tracks on the album from Light the Dark? What's the science behind that? The science is because I wanted to make this album theatrical as possible. Mm -hmm. So when you had the first part, I wanted the light part to show just everything. Like, you know, you going through all this stuff and you think money could fix your happiness. So that's why you have tracks like Cash Maniac and Sumo. That's why you got those tracks on there on Mm -hmm. the light part. People like, shouldn't Sumo be on the dark part? No. Just because (laughs) it's hype doesn't mean it's dark. It's not dark at all. It's talk about money. Like it's very exaggerated. It's like the hyperbole of the whole thing. You you know? Then you have the middle part, which is reality needs to check, which is the gray part, which is everything that's happening right now as we speak. Mm. Like everything that's going on in my life, everything that's going on with the presidential election and in the rap game. So I just wanted to show what was real that was going on in my life in, in in my life, in my point of view. Yeah, I don't think people understand reality no more, man. I think because of the digital age we live in, like everybody's in this virtual world even when they're not on their smartphones. Yeah. I mean, what can you say, bro? Mm -hmm. It's just going to keep advancing, you know? Are you at all engaged in uh, midterm elections like Andrew Gillen could potentially be your governor? You know, I don't really dig into politics. It's just not me. It's not my thing. So no planning on voting now, nothing? I never said I never planned on voting. Okay. I just said it's not really my thing, but I really got to read into it, mm-hmm. and I just got to find time to read into it. Take our word for it. Encourage people to vote Andrew Gillum. Andrew Gillum. First black governor of Florida. He's from the, he's from the state, mayor of Tallahassee. He's the one. <laughs> he's the one? He's the one. Yeah, okay. he's the one. Now, and another visual you got in the, uh, the the Cobain video is when you acting like you're on IG Live and you're going on a rant and you're pointing the gun and the people in the background are laughing. That's pretty self-explanatory. Yeah. It's pretty <laughs> pretty in your face. Yeah. It's so in your face that it's just there. Because that's know? what we do. Like, I sit back and I, not only do I laugh, I'll be like, why is this person incriminating themselves so much? And I'm the type of person, I like to see people get arrested off stuff they do on social media. You know what's crazy? The boondocks predicted all this. All of it. The boondocks <laughs> predicted Aaron McGruder every is a God, single a thing. psychic, a genius. Yes. The boondocks predicted all of it. From the From wardrobe. The, yeah. The purses, the yes. delicious man bag. Yes. The, what else? Snitching on yourself. Yes. The stop snitching movement. Of, what else? Yeah, they pretty much predicted a lot of stuff. Yeah. And more stuff, but I can't really... Can't, can't attack it on camera. You feel me? Now, police brutality, you talk about that also in Sirens. Yeah. Um, so... First of all, you did go to the same school as Trayvon Martin. Yes. But you guys didn't know each other. But I'm sure that had a big impact on you, too. That had a big impact. And it had a bigger impact when my brother died because of police brutality. Your brother died of police brutality? Yes. He got killed by the police? Yes. What happened? Really? Well, he, he got tased. And um, he got tased by Hylia Police. And if you know about Miami and you know about Hylia Police, if you're not Spanish, you damn near just not Spanish or white and there's barely any white people. Like if you black and you in high live, bro, you, yeah, you're fucked, pretty much. So what happened? He got pulled over. He was just nah. He was or? he was trying to get away from him, and they tased him, and then he went into cardiac arrest. Wow. Yikes! Mm. How old were you? I was 19 years old. So how long ago was this? I don't know how old you are. I'm 23. Wow. Yikes! So all of that is so fresh. Everything yeah. happening. That's probably part of the reason why. It was good for you to get away from yeah, Florida. You got it the hell out of Florida, yeah. That didn't make you want to get more involved in politics, though, or just to see what was going on? Like, when you see how Trayvon Martin went to stand your ground law and then your, how the way your brother went out, like... It just... 
I just felt like the only way I could cope with things is just like writing through it. Mm -hmm. Just like expressing it artistically because I felt like that could go a long way more than just me like marching. Why'd you get expelled from high school? Uh, Because I ain't do shit. (laughs) (laughs) I ain't do nothing. Well, not literal in the sense, but, you know, it just felt like I didn't fit their standards. But, you know. Do you feel like the curriculum was too slow for you? Mm, no, nah, not really. The curriculum was there. It was just the teaching. Gotcha. Some you had some good teachers, and you just had teachers that'll just put you down. That's a fact. We've have all you, had that experience. Have you dealt with these deaths in your life? Like really, like sat down and like I don't know, talked grieve. Through them, no, I just grieved through them. Write yeah. about it. Write about them. Yeah. Grieve through them. Get my alone time. Mm-hmm. I just try to like keep it fresh. But the only way the only way I keep it going is just like I can't cry cuz I know they're with me. It's just like the only way I deal it, I dealt with it because I would see them in my dreams. Whoever I lost that was close to me, I would always see them in my dreams. So I know they're out there somewhere. They're mm-hmm. just not here. And that's how I keep going through it. You also study Muay Thai, right? Yes. Are you really like how far advanced are you? With that. I don't even know. I just know I'm really good at kicking somebody in their shit. <laughs> I'm, sure, <laughs> I'm sure that's very meditative also. It's a stress reliever, huh? It's, yes. I encourage anybody to do martial arts, bro. I'm like, I grew up watching Bruce Lee and stuff like that. And you know, like, you ever seen this movie Ong Back? Ong yes, Back 2? Yes, Ong Back Thai Warrior. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I actually interviewed him before. Oh, word? Yeah, he didn't speak English that well, but it was cool still. Nah, man, that movie is tight. He was sliding under Bruce the cars. Leroy, he was doing everything. Bruce, Last Dragon? Yes. Show enough? There you go. Mm-hmm. Man, I know my thing. Know. <laughs> <laughs> man, Did you get into that? Don't you test. Into, you got into that early or later in life? Bruh, see, I have a father. Like, my dad, like, put me up on everything. He put <laughs> me up on everything when I was, like, mad young. Like, when I was three, my favorite movie was um Star Wars Return of the Jedi. That was my favorite movie. Mm-hmm. I rented that movie, like, so many times. And then when I got older, I was like... I was like, yeah, I want this movie again. He was like, this one again? He was like, nah, bro, watch this one. So he put me up on Empire Strikes Back. He put me up on Into the Dragon. He put me up on Jim Kelly, Black Belt Jones, Shaft, Black Caesar. My dad's, like, really into, like, a lot of the, most of this stuff, like, Pulp Fiction. Like, that's how I got into most of the things. My dad taught me how to draw. You know, my dad was the first, my first supporter, like, when it came down to me doing music. He was right. like, yo, do it. You know what I'm saying? If you want to be a rapper, be a rapper. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm going to support you. Just make sure you home before curfew. I'm going to beat that ass. <laughs> See, that's <laughs> that's the power what, of black fathers, baby. That's right. Like, you know, and that's what it is, man. What's the title mean? TA-1300. What's that, a license taboo. plate? Taboo. No, no, taboo. no, that's taboo. Taboo. <laughs> taboo. Oh, that means taboo. taboo. That's taboo. Oh my gosh. Oh. I replaced every B on the <laughs> album with a 13. <laughs> Three times. And there's 13 you. tracks on the album as mm. well. Yes. Oh. 13's my lucky number, because my birthday's January 3rd, so that's 13. So. It's January 3rd? Mm-hmm. You a Capricorn? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. <laughs> Are you a Capricorn too? Hell no. Uh, <laughs> what that my brother is a Capricorn. My oh. brother who passed away, he's mm-hmm. born January 18th. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm an Aquarius. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's me all day. Now, it looks reason- like taboo when you're on the cover. It is taboo. Yeah. It is. <laughs> Why did I think that was a 13? It, it is it a 13. Is. Oh. What's wrong with He's you, man? Old. I'm old, nigga. Yeah. 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 Now, not you that also old, said bro. part of the reason that you moved to L.A. was to get away from <laughs> Why you look at his hand when he said not that old? <laughs> <laughs> you got to look at the hands and the neck first. <laughs> look at the hand, no, I tried to look at the head. He was like, not that old. Cause, you oh, know, I got a bald head today. Get, yeah, you got a bald head, but oh, it looked like have, your hair could grow back. No, no, no. no, no, no. I can't. If I had just like this much hair, you'd be like, oh, yeah, this nigga about 40-something. The hairline start right here. Oh, I mean... Don't yeah. worry, you're going to get the same thing. You keep nah, hell no. Nah. Mm-hmm. Nope. Mm. Now his hair nope. looks like it's... You got that just now. Nah. Give you about nah. three, <laughs> three more years. Nope. Three more years. You said three? <laughs> I ain't going to be looking like George Jefferson. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all been That's crazy, man. Oh, like... Wayne. Wayne. <laughs> we ain't going to talk about that. We are not going to talk about that, bro. Wayne is holding we ain't gonna on, talk about brother, that. brother. Little man, Wayne. Wayne, keep holding on, bro. I encourage Wayne to keep holding I on, man. Wayne is a legend, right? A whole legend out here in these streets. But he is really showing this generation of dreadlock people how they're going to look in the future. Because he's holding on, but he's standing right up in here. Oh, nope. No, nah, not me. No. He's good to go. No, I'm good. No. How old are you? 23. He said it already. Oh, yeah. He said it three <laughs> times. Yo, you getting over real. <laughs> Uh, so you never thought about um, having a rap name? You never had a rap name? Just your real name always? 
Yeah, I use my real name because all my rap names suck. Like what? Can't tell you. Now. Nah. I'm sure we could find <laughs> out. Come on, tell, I would love to know what some of your no, rap names were. No, no, no. Come on, no, we could laugh no. about it now. No, we're not laughing he, he about it. No, this. we're not. Not this one. Give us one. No. Come on, no. Denzel. <laughs> Give us a little rap no. name. This would be fun. Rap name? Yeah. Tony it? Raxton. That was not your that rap name. That was not your rap name. Was You're it? right. Oh. Yeah. Or am I? <laughs> Tony was Raxton. It? Tony Raxton. Tony Raxton. Raxton. <laughs> Did you ever think about redoing I Love Me Some Him? Huh? <laughs> that was one of her songs. I Love Me Some Him. Nah. Just, <laughs> I, I play the beat. We played it yesterday. All right, Yo, stop, it. Don't make, stop it. Man. My song was, my name was not Tony Raxton. Oh, I thought <laughs> you were saying. Y'all Google it. 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 That's, that's a serious. hard name, though. Yeah. His name Tony Tamar Raxton. Raxton. <laughs> hey, yo, I would take that nigga serious if his name was Tony Raxton. Raxton. Yeah, yeah, I'd be like, he ain't trying to be around. Tony Raxton out of Florida tune. Man, what else is a good name? No, we want to know what name you have. This is a crazy dope name. I didn't know that was your real name. I thought that was a rap name. Before my rap name, it was Denzel Aquarius Killer Curry. Denzel Aquarius Killer Curry? <laughs> Denzel Aquarius Killer Curry. Killer Curry. Okay. Aquarius Killer Curry. Okay. Was, Aquarius okay. Killer. He was an Aquarius Killer. He I'm an Aquarius. Aquarius. Oh, got and you. And he's a killer. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you showed yeah, that I'm one. I'm glad you showed that one. Glad yeah. you showed yeah. that just Denzel It was like Curry, a long buddy. ass name. Yeah. But everybody was like, yo, that name's sick. But people, <laughs> people would think the name is fake now because of how good Steph Curry is. You yeah. know what I'm saying? That Everybody's like, so Denzel, what's your real name? Denzel. Like, I got a black mom. She named me Denzel. Like, Yes. <laughs> so you were named after Denzel Washington? I mean, who else will I be Clearly. named after? <laughs> 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 I mean, come on, bro. It's very true. Very true. Now, you had said that you moved. Part of the reason that you moved to L.A. was to get away from your ex, right? What was so toxic about that relationship that you finally had to be like, I'm out of here? Well, if I'm going to be real, mm -hmm. if I almost had to put my hands on you one time, yeah, that's enough for me to say, fuck this. That's what actually one of my ex-boyfriends used to always tell me that he would say his mom said, if you ever feel like you got to put your hands on a woman, then you need to leave her alone and never go back. That's a fact. Yeah, it's just nah, feelings on both ends wasn't reciprocated well, so. Mm -hmm. Just let that go. Mm. Have you no, spoke to each other after though? I mean, Later yeah. On? I mean, there's no regrets. I mean, nothing crazy, but it was just like, you know, I'm doing me, do you. You got a life, you got a boyfriend, do that. Leave me alone. I'm going to focus on me. This is what I need to do. Okay. Not, not that there's ever a valid reason to put your hands on a woman, but what did she do to you to make you feel like you wanted to? Smack the shit out of me. Oh, <laughs> you can walk away from that. Yeah. I get it the first reaction. No, no, the first two instinct. times, yeah. yeah. But when it, a constant thing is like, mm -hmm. nah, bro. But why was she smacking you? I mean, because I told her to get out. Damn. Were you cheating? No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> why you pause so long? That was a weird pause. <laughs> because I was lying. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, so I was like, weren't. yeah, that doesn't seem real. You got, you got so caught you... cheating and she no, smacked you. No, I didn't get caught cheating. But I was I cheating. told her I cheated. So you deserve yeah, to get you deserve smacked. A little, you deserve no, I deserve... That people deserve the truth. No, no. What did I say? <laughs> I meant to say, uh -huh. I meant to say, I like she deserved going. that I tell her the Absolutely. truth. Absolutely. Right. Cause like it's like what Bernie Mac said. You ain't gonna tell my motherfucking wife. I'm gonna tell my motherfucking wife. But once you tell the truth, you can't tell her how to react to it. Yeah, of course not. So well, you also can't you. put your hands on people. Period. And I, I think that women should not put their hands. Yeah, on but men we like broke up should... and got back together. Broke mm -hmm. up, got back together, and then it was just like. It just wasn't it was gonna just, work. And then it was That's just crazy. like, yeah. That's why it's better to lie to your girl sometimes, man. Oh, she don't yeah. Better than not cheating. Yeah. yeah. I mean, how about just not cheating? I mean, that's that. better than not cheating. That I don't like Black lying. Don't I hate lying. <laughs> like, I don't like lying. Can she still, like, do you still get those text messages from any of your exes? Like, congrats on your I only album? got one. Hey, I only got one real ex, and that was the one I was, oh, okay. we were just talking about. Yeah, you're still young. She texted me and be like, hey, and I don't text back. Hey, that's the little fishing thing. Like, Yeah, I'm just like, nah, I'm good, you know. At least you know I'm good, so. Mm -hmm. Mario, I hope you're all right. Keep it respectable. Do my thing. Mm -hmm. It took you a while to do this album, but it's very well put together, just well thought out. You think that artists are putting out too much material too quickly nowadays? Yep. You're just trying to satisfy the hunger of the fan, man. Mm -hmm. Like I feel like, you know, I could still satisfy them with something that's going to last them for a long time than just something temporary. That makes sense. Most people will say the opposite. Most people will say they got to satisfy the fans because they, they'll go on to the next thing. That works for some people. Yeah, they'll go on to the next thing. And believe me, they have. But when I come back, 
they all come back. Mm-hmm. Especially when you got some heat. And your shows are still selling out all the time. Exactly. Yeah. So you have to, so I really don't think there's a problem with just holding on and just waiting and just perfecting your craft. Build Absolutely. a strong foundation. You build like, a strong foundation, you'll be fine. Like how many songs do you record to whittle it down to 13? I lost count. That many, huh? Yeah, it was that many. Cause like when we first started the project, I barely liked going into the studio. I didn't like going in because it was just like, I was coming from a rough period with 2016's like Imperial because that was like the dark period, which is like basically what I was talking about on the end of the album. Mm-hmm. But when we was making the tracks, I thought the whole, I thought this next album was gonna be like, like I thought this album was just gonna be completely dark. I thought I was trying to make this completely dark, but I would have alienated a lot of people. So the more I started like being more self-aware, got sober, started thinking about things, thinking about my life, thinking about what's going on right now, thinking about just everything, things that people just don't talk about. Mm. So I was just like, I know what I'm gonna do. Then I told my management everything that happened to me, everything that's going on, and then I just put it into this one project because even though it could, it doesn't have to be too late, it's too late for me to say what I gotta say, but you know what I'm saying? Whatever happened to me, but it's not too late for somebody else to like, you know, listen and understand. Now you said sober, so you don't drink do drugs or anything anymore, completely nah, done. I'm, I'm done with that. Dope. How difficult was that? Not really that difficult. I think drinking is more of like a fun thing because my father used to, de- he like deliver liquor around like South Florida and stuff like that because he worked at this place. Um, it's like a liquor company. You go all around Florida just to deliver wine and like liquor and everything. Like Uber drinks. No, not Uber. Like a it was like literally like a truck. You drive a truck, like they put all the liquor on. Mm. On the thing, you like have distribution to go all to the different liquor stores. Yeah, different okay, liquor stores to deliver it. Yeah. Balls, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, my father was like, you know, if you're gonna drink, drink responsibly. Drink in the comfort of your home, around your friends and your family. That's that's where you should drink. Don't be out here belligerently drunk. Da, 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 da. But when I was when I started smoking weed, it was really because a fan was like, Denzel, what you smoking? I was like, nothing. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And then I was like, wait a minute, I could pull this shit off. I was like, yeah, I could pull this shit off. I could go without smoking. I don't need that shit. And then at that moment, that's when I knew, Denzel, your life is going to be boring. So you better think of something quick to replace smoking. So that's why I went into Muay Thai. Oh, okay. That's the last time you had to kick somebody in the face. Last time I kicked somebody in the face. You know, last time I, you want the exact time I kicked somebody <laughs> in the, the face. the exact time, but was it really recently? <laughs> was it recently? No, nah, because it's just mainly training. Oh, so not like a real... No, nobody in nah, the street. Nah, you get sparring drills. Got you, got you definitely you, got get you. sparring drills, you know, but I never kick somebody in the face. I punch somebody in the face. Really? What happened? Nothing. We just <laughs> was punching each other in the face and, you and know... Spar. Yeah, just sparring. That's so what we do. So kick? I can't show you in this office. Why? I just push the chair back and <laughs> aim that way. Hell no. Nah. No, no, aim that way. <laughs> No. I think you can. I think you can. Why kick would I sh- want to kick near Angela Lee? That's why I kick over back up to it. We're gonna give you space. First of all, he almost broke my wrist when he shook my hand when he came in here. You think you can kick like, over Charlamagne? Hey, I'm head? sorry, man. I got a. I got a strong ass <laughs> grip. Did. I'm sorry. You think you can kick over Charlamagne? Listen, I ain't no motherfucking prop, nigga. All right, you relax. Why you y'all using me it. as the goddamn? Yeah, yo, this <laughs> nigga Blackie Chan and shit. Denzel Curry on back. But shit, nah. But um, mm-hmm. last time I kicked somebody in the face, it was actually my cousin. <laughs> what? <laughs> Why? Nah, it was on accident, though. Oh. Yeah, you I kicked kick him, somebody. kicked him in the eye. Why? You were showing. It was off? on accident. Yeah, I was showing him moving, and then oh, got you, got you, definitely show us the move with Charlamagne right to, now. Like, just... He probably tried to lean in, and be like, "Let me see what he's doing," and boom, right in his head. Nah. <laughs> nah, I was like, "Hey, yo, watch this," because he thought I was kicking low, and then like, the... <laughs> he was like, "Oh shit." <laughs> <laughs> Damn, that's fucked up. You kicked your cousin in the face for no reason. It wasn't for no reason. I was showing him a goddamn move, goddamn. Goodness gracious. Shit. Well, we appreciate you for joining us, bro. Word. Denzel Curry. Taboo. Taboo all those topics that people it. don't be wanting to discuss. Absolutely. Well, thank you for joining us. It's the Breakfast Club. It's Denzel Curry.